Hi, my name is Jarvis. I'm an engineer here in Austin, Texas. Uh, if you're visiting and um, watching this video from Tindy, th thank you so much for stopping by and checking out the Jarvi Powerline modem. Um, if you're on YouTube and you're just trying to check out some new technology that's out there, um, hey, go to my Tindy page and check out the Jarvi Powerline modem. So the Jarvi Powerline modem is a reliable, low-cost solution uh, to learn about just Internet of Things technology um, and smart home technology. Um, and so I'm not going to be too wordy about that. Feel free to check out my GitHub page or you know Wikipedia uh, if you want some background information. I really want to focus on today um, just demoing the Powerline modem. And so what the Powerline modem allows you to do is to communicate between devices over your home uh, power line. So 120 or 240 uh, AC. So over here, um, my daughter is actually recording this. Um, so she's gonna kind of be panning and moving around. But over here we have um, the two power line modems um, connected to microcontrollers. And then we have some 120 volt compliant uh, AC power cords. Um, and then this is gonna serve as the master device on the power line network. And this is going to serve as a slave device in the network. Um, so looking over here and focusing on the master, uh, you can see that um, the AC cord is going into several meters of um, an extension cord and then going into a 120 outlet over here. Um, and then on the slave side, you can see the same thing. Um, power cord that comes with uh, the, the uh, Jarvi Powerline Modem uh, demo kit. Um, it's going into a several meter long extension cable and then going into um, an outlet that's down there. So um, you can see there's several components that are involved with um, the power line modem setup, uh, the power cord, the actual demo board, plus a microcontroller. Uh, so I think it's a huge value if you want to um, get up and running quickly is to kind of get with the demo kit. Um, if you feel like you got things under control and you really want to um, have ownership of developing and, and kind of starting your Internet of Things journey from a lower level, the, uh, the demo board is available just for purchase and then you can get the wiring and choose whatever microcontroller dev kit that you want. I um, like to highlight though, um, this particular microcontroller dev kit is the Adafruit Metro. Um, it's just an Arduino compliant one of the very many variants out there that has the Atmega 328 microcontroller on there. Um, so you can program it from the Arduino development environment. Um, I really like to point that out because there is example code available on my GitHub page. So if you go to Tendi, um, you'll find the links to GitHub and then you can quickly get running with firmware um, and code if you go ahead and get a Arduino compliant device and then to download that firmware on there. And again, the Jarvi PLM modem is just, it's just a way to quickly learn. Um, and that's why it's called a demo board. It is not a product, um, but I think you can learn a lot from it if, for your, uh, uh, an experiment uh, with it to develop your own um, power line modem applications. So getting back to the demo, um, on the master side, there's, there's firmware that will send a identification command to all the slave devices on the power line network. In this case, we only have one. Um, it'll send that command once every 12 seconds, and that's indicated by four LED blinks. And then after the blinks subside, then it sends the message. Um, on the slave side, the slave is meant to only respond if it, if it receives that particular command. Um, and so when the slave receives the identify command, um, it computes a checksum on it. Um, the master also sends a checksum for the data that is sent across. That way you can make sure that uh, noise on the power line bus does not affect the message that's being transferred. So master sends a checksum, slave gets the command, also calculates a checksum, and then it makes, then the slave makes sure that, hey, the, the master checksum that I received for the data that the master sent matches the, the, the um, checksum that I calculated on the message that I received. Once all that stuff is checked out, um, the slave will blink um, um, X number of times and, and it's actually uh, blinks the, uh, for the amount of, of characters in the message. 
that it received. Um, so real quick, I would like to show you that if I disconnect the slave from the power bus, that it will no longer blink. Um, and so if we keep the slave and the master in here, you'll see the slave will continue to send the message with the four blinks. Um, and you'll see that the since the slave has been disconnected from the power bus or my home power bus, that it is no longer blinking. And so we're just going to sit here. I think it just sent one and then we'll wait for it to send another. And we'll see that this won't blink. And then we'll plug the slave back in and we'll see how quickly um, it's able to acknowledge commands after it gets uh, on the bus again. So I think it blinked again and we'll wait one more time. So the four blinks. And then it's going to send identify command and then no blinking here. And then we're going to plug in the slave device again. Okay, wait for the next message to be sent. And then the slave device should blink. So you can see that it blinks again. Um, and again, this is being transmitted through however many meters of cable in my home. The power line modem um, is specified to work up to about 3,000 feet um, of cable. Um, so again, we're going to show you that we're communicating with my power line network by disconnecting um, things over here. I've disconnected the slave from the power bus and then we we'll see that the master is going to send an identification command again. The slave does not respond because it's been disconnected um, from the wall outlet over there. So we'll look at one more cycle over here. The slave is about to send another command. You see it doesn't respond. So Marley, stay there. I'm going to plug things back in. I have to get that on video. Once I find the plug, OK. Plugged it back in. So on the next master, uh, the next master identification command sent, we should see the slave respond. OK, and so likewise, we'll kind of circumvent this step. Um, on the master side, I'm going to disconnect the master from the bus, but I'm going to disconnect it way over here. And then we'll see that the master will still blink and transmit data, but it will not get this to the slave because the master has now been taken off the power bus and the slave is on the power bus. But it just shows that we're in fact communicating over the power lines in my home. And so we'll wait for one more cycle, then we'll plug the master back in, um, and then we'll expect that the slave will blink. So let me go ahead and plug it back in. Again, catch me. Plug it back in. Okay. Plug it back. And so you can see now with the slave, with the master back on and the slave back on the bus, that identification command gets sent, and the slave um, is now acknowledging things again. Okay, so real quick, just film me. So this has a, um, a couple applications. Um, so if you're doing any type of security monitoring uh, where you have a camera that needs to be plugged into 120AC, um, it allows you the ability to kind of have this network of cameras in your home or a security system that requires power to also be able to communicate all those power wire, those power wires without added wire. Um, added components, which could lower the cost of a particular product that you might want to develop uh, uh, the, the PLM with. Um, also, what other things could you do? Um, I guess any type of uh, like outside home lighting that you want to do, uh, outside your home, say in your landscape or in your garden. Um, also, you can connect all the lights up to the single power wires and maybe be able to for some particular reason, you want to communicate uh, between the lights that are in different zones and tell them to come on and turn off. Um, you can add this technology to a mobile app that you want to develop. Um, you kind of have a, the mobile app communicate to a main control unit, maybe through Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, and then have that main control unit kind of take in messages and deliver those messages out to a slave. There's many different kind of mesh networking things that you can do, um, but the Jarvi Powerline modem can help you get there.